The Mercedes GLE Coupe is the three-pointed star's take on the Coupe SUV segment for large luxury crossovers, which means it directly takes on cars like BMW's X6, Audi's Q8 and the Porsche Cayenne Coupe, models that ride on SUV underpinnings but which feature a coupe-like sloping roof. Whether you like this genre of car or not, it's hard not to be impressed by Mercedes' execution of the theme. It's a sportier, more stylish, coupe-style version of the GLE five-door model, and it gains an added dash of maturity in this second-generation form. If something works, you should first copy it and then improve on it. Take the rather curious, contradictory idea of a luxury SUV coupe. Now, BMW introduced this with their X6 model in 2007, and they sold so many that Mercedes couldn't help noticing the need for something similar. Hence the introduction of the first generation C292 series GLE coupe in 2015, then followed by the announcement of this second generation version five years later. If you'd like a sports coupe but you need a large SUV and you want something that's fashion conscious and stylish, then this Mercedes aims to satisfy. It's certainly an arresting thing to look at as extrovert, powerful and in your face as a car of this kind needs to be. Yet there is perhaps a dash of maturity here too that rivals like BMW's X6, Audi's Q8 and Porsche's Cayenne Coupe maybe don't quite have. And that's an impression backed up by news of what lies beneath the bonnet this time around, which includes electrified technology of both the mild hybrid and the plug-in sort. You'd expect everything significant here to be shared with the ordinary GLE SUV, which is broadly true, although the wheelbase here is shorter. And of course, you've got this swept back roof, which necessitates a redesigned tail section and a smaller boot. Otherwise though, it's all standard GLE. Uh, this version, like the conventional one, uh, rolls down Mercedes US production line uh, in Tuscaloosa. In second generation W167 series form, the GLE has gained a fresh MHA modular high architecture platform, which has delivered a larger cabin. Plus there's more luxury and sophistication with the brand's latest twin widescreen cockpit screens and Hey Mercedes MBUX infotainment technology. Uh, tarmac traction has been enhanced too with an improved 4MATIC four-wheel drive system uh, which more intuitively apportions torque between the axles and that aids off-road prowess too should you ever need it. It's not likely that you will because cars like this are bought for style rather than substance yet Mercedes insists that this GLE Coupe has both. Are they right? Well, Car and Driving's video road test, the industry's most detailed, will give you the answers. We'd understand if you happen to be struggling to imagine what a luxury SUV, which is also trying to be a sports coupe, might be like to drive. We wondered too, the very first time we saw such a thing, uh, we tested BMW's first generation X6 back in 2008, and then we wondered some more when we looked at the clumsy underpinnings that models like this are expected to ride around on. Well, the first generation C292 series GLE Coupe, which was launched in 2015, was particularly bad in that respect. It trolled around on the ancient architecture of a Mark III Mercedes M-Class dating back to 2011. Powerful engines did ensure the car's prodigious speed in a straight line, but in this eclectic category of unsporting sports coupes, it was easily the least dynamic of the lot when it came to acquainting torque with tarmac. It would be an exaggeration to suggest that there's anything more than an evolutionary improvement in that media showing here. Uh, Porsche's Cayenne Coupe is still way out in front in this class if you want a large SUV coupe that you can really enjoy driving. But thanks to the fact that this time around the GLE Coupe gets a 62 mm shorter wheelbase than its standard SUV counterpart and that this is based around a more modern MHA modular high architecture chassis that's a considerable 33% stiffer than the previous platform. Uh, this car is no longer the dynamic duffer it previously was and it is able to broadly match the rather unremarkable class handling standard set by its two main rivals, BMW's X6 and the Audi Q8. 
which means you might be surprised at just how agile something as big and heavy can be through the bends. Uh, yes, it is still very clear that you're cruising about in a car with underpinnings that are more appropriate to tugging horse boxes uh, than potentially tackling the Nürburgring. But uh, once you adjust to that and to this US-built GLE Coupe's prodigious weight and width, uh, in some ways driving this Mercedes hard can be quite a blast. It's all very well to say that a fast E-Class estate would make more sense, but this thing sits you so much higher and bears down far more assertively on dawdling traffic ahead. It also accelerates uber quickly and it actually grips surprisingly well through the turns. You're going to want to know about engines. From launch, uh, there were only two offered in the mainstream version of this car, uh, both of them fueling from the black pump. Prevailing views on the social unacceptability of diesel power have clearly yet to reach Mercedes uh, Stuttgart HQ, but perhaps that is appropriate given that this particular model line has never pretended to be in any way politically or socially acceptable. Well, broadly speaking, it hasn't anyway. I mean, you can own a GLE Coupe with a free son of environmental credence if you choose to opt for the only four-cylinder variant, and that's the entry-level 350DE version. And this mates a turbocharged 2-litre diesel to a gearbox-mounted 136-horsepower electric motor powered by a 30.8-kilowatt-hour battery for an overall output of 320 horsepower. This combination delivers some quite impressive stats, 700 newton meters of torque and 66 miles of all-electric driving range before you start burning that evil black fluid. And despite an almost unbelievably chunky curb weight of just under 2.7 tons, the 350DE is pretty fleet too. It reaches 62 in 6.9 seconds en route to 130 mph or 100 miles an hour with uh, battery power only. We can't help wondering though how many people will actually want such a sensibly orientated power plant when they're choosing a car that thumbs its nose at convention in the way that this one does. If you're going to have a GLE Coupe, then you probably want it with a big growly engine, uh, possibly the 3 litre diesel straight 6 that's fitted to this 400D variant we're trying here. This generates a meaty 330 horsepower and dispatches the 62 miles an hour benchmark in just 5.7 seconds on the way to 149 miles an hour. And it feels much quicker than the plug-in variant because it has 400 kilos less curb weight to lug about. We can't really see the need to go much faster than that in this car, but we can understand why you might want it with a bit more of a stirring aural accompaniment than a diesel engine can provide, in which case your dealer will point you in the direction of the Mercedes-AMG petrol-powered models probably the 3 litre 6 cylinder GLE 53 variant because that's the only one that might not necessarily require a lottery win for ownership. Uh, this model's 435 horsepower engine benefits from the inclusion of mild hybrid tech which sees a 48 volt electrical system supplementing the usual 12 volt arrangement. This powers a setup based around an integrated ISG starter generator, which combines a starter motor and generator into one powerful electric motor, and that's housed between the engine and the transmission. Uh, as well as a range of efficiency benefits, this provides as much as 22 horsepower of extra EQ boost grunt under hard acceleration, uh, with extra pulling power low right down where you need it, uh, helping to negate turbo lag below 2000 RPM. Uh, the result is sparkling acceleration, which sees the 62 miles an hour benchmark dispatched in just 5.3 seconds on the way to a top speed that's artificially limited to 155 miles an hour flat out. If somehow that's not sufficient, then the wild GLE 63S model sits at the top of the range using AMG's usual throaty tuned 4 litre V8 here in a 612 horsepower state of tune. It's an engine also embellished with the 48 volt mild hybrid tech, so there's the same 22 HP of extra EQ boost grunt under hard acceleration as you'll get with the 53 variant, enough in this case to deliver 62 from rest in just three seconds on the way to an unrestricted top speed of 173 miles an hour. This top variant, like uh, its GLE 53 showroom stablemate, differs from the mainstream GLE coupes in its suspension setup. It incorporates the brand's active ride control system with its incorporated active anti-roll stabilizing technology. It's a pity that this isn't optional further down the range as it is in other markets because it makes a big difference when it comes to limiting cornering body roll at speed. 
All GLE coupes though do get standard airmatic air suspension, which is very good at soaking up things like potholes and speed humps. And it's one of those setups that can vary its height as you drive, uh, lowering automatically when you're cruising on the highway. Another key standard fitment here across the lineup is the brand's 4MATIC four four-wheel drive setup, which of course is engineered primarily for tarmac territory. And it's one of those where the torque split can vary on demand. That's courtesy of a multi-plate clutch system, which normally sends 100% of power to the rear wheels, but when it's necessary, it can send up to 40% to the fronts when required. Whatever GLE coupe you choose, it'll come with basically the same nine-speed automatic gearbox. That's controllable via the steering wheel paddle shifters here. It's supplied in sharper shifting AMG speed shift TCT form with the two Mercedes AMG variants. Uh, either way, this transmission works as seamlessly as it does in the many other Mercedes models in which we've already tried it. And change times for this gearbox are one of the things uh, which are influenced by the standard dynamic selection driving mode system. The other elements are throttle response, steering feedback and suspension feel via the standard adaptive damping system. The dynamic select setup, uh, which is accessible via this rocker switch down here on the centre console, doesn't unfortunately provide an auto or an adaptive style mode to make all the drive setup decisions for you, but as usual there is an individual setting and that allows you to program in all your own parameters. Most owners though, uh, they'll be quite happy with the preset eco, comfort and sport options uh, with the full fat AMG models adding in sport plus and slippery modes too. Uh, there is also an extra dedicated off-road setting. Uh, yes, now off-road capability, we should mention that because unlike its competitors, this car actually has some to satisfy the few owners who will ever actually want it. Uh, selecting that off-road mode will automatically raise the airmatic air suspension to take you clear of obstacles, which uh, the standard 205mm ride height might otherwise see you crashing into. A typical GLE Coupe customer, of course, is unlikely to have the slightest interest in any of that, but some of this extra off-piste capability might be useful in certain slippery circumstances when you're towing. For that, you'll need to specify the optional towing package. Uh, this increases the standard 2,700 kilo brake towing capacity figure to 3,500 kilos, and as well as throwing in an electronically folding tow bar, it includes the brand's clever trailer maneuvering assist technology. Up to three miles an hour, this can control your steering angle while you're reversing backwards while hitched up. As you monitor progress via dynamic guidelines shown as an additional part of the rear view camera display. Ultimately though, you don't choose a car like this for its practical virtues. And this Mercedes is more likely to be judged by likely customers in terms of how close it can get to tackling the turns like a sports car while continuing with all the attributes of a large SUV. Uh, this GLE's cause in this regard isn't helped by the somewhat vague responses you get from the electrical steering rack, even when it's weighted up a little uh, in the dynamic select sport mode. That setting also lowers the ride height by 15 millimeters at speed, and that's a measure intended not only to reduce body roll, but also to further improve aerodynamics. Uh, those are boasted by Mercedes to be class leading. Doubtless that contributes to this car's impressive levels of cruising refinement. Uh, you'll never have to raise your voice to chat to passengers. As with all large luxury SUVs, the highway is where this one is in its element, especially if it's been fitted with the optional active distance assist Distronic feature, which draws from GPS live traffic data, and that enables it to recognize and respond to a tailback and slow moving traffic even before you reach it. You get this as part of the optional driving assistance package, which amongst other things also includes active steering assist, uh, which basically does most of the steering for you at a cruise. Plus there's route-based speed adjustment, uh, which once you've programmed in a navigation destination, uh, can automatically adapt your speed to the curves, the roundabouts, and the junctions that you'll encounter throughout your journey. It's all very reassuring. For too long, the Mercedes brand has lacked emotion and sensuality, producing cars you could admire, but not necessarily 
desire. From the beginning, though, a century ago, it was never like that. In its early years, the company established by Carl Benz and Gottlieb Daimler made machines that in equal measure reflected the character of its founders. Benz was the more rational one, but Daimler was a man driven by his passion. He was a man who would have understood immediately what this GLE coupe model is all about. It's true that the world doesn't need a car as big, brash and extrovert as this one, but it's also very clear from growing sales in this segment that an increasing number of our planet's better healed inhabitants would certainly like one. Now sure, it will dramatically divide opinion wherever you park it, but as an extreme expression of stylish sporting practicality, there's not much else that comes close. Let's get specific with the design of this second generation GLE Coupe. And the first thing to say is that unlike its C292 series predecessor, this is not simply a rebodied GLE SUV. This time, Mercedes has shortened the wheelbase of this Coupe by 62 millimeters to make both the looks and the handling a bit more agile, or at least as agile as they can be in a model that's grown substantially over its predecessor. Now, this car might be 110 millimeters shorter than the standard GLE SUV, but it's still well over 4.9 meters long, uh, 39 millimeters longer than before, in fact, and stands a very uncoupe like 1.7 meters high. It dwarfs almost everything else on the road. In profile here, it's an interesting confection. The muscular wings and high belt line of a classic sporting GT somehow blended with the large wheel arches and generous ground clearance of an SUV. Uh, the roof rails of the ordinary model are absent, but these prominent side steps preserve the crossover vibe. As usual with a car of this kind, the wheels are absolutely enormous. Uh, the only size you can have in our market is this 22-inch rim. Uh, this rising lower character crease connects the flared arches and it works with the sharply defined upper swage line to add a sense of purpose to the profile which dips dramatically over the C-pillar. Up front there's enough menace to make fast lane dawdlers scuttle out of your way double quick. Uh, flatter angled windscreen and this twin power domed bonnet flows down into this upright radiator grille with its single louvre and glistening diamond style chrome pins. These prominent lower corner air intakes are enhanced by twin chromed ribbing strakes. And that adds further to all the silver work already in place thanks to this prominent chrome plated underguard. Uh, just in case that's a not enough of an overtaking statement, then there's a set of piercing LED multi-beam high performance headlights too. The rear, as so often with the coupe, is the most uniquely styled part of the car. Uh, the slim, elongated two-part LED rear lamps emphasize this second generation model's seven millimeter increase in width. Uh, these corner slashes are purely aesthetic and perhaps unnecessary, but this flush fitting tailgate glass with its high level brake light sliver looks lovely, uh, almost horizontal in the way it flows into this incorporated spoiler. There's a flush transition from the tailgate to the bumper which incorporates the license plate and it sits above a high gloss chrome plated underguard with integrated tailpipe trim elements. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, namely this generation model's MHA modular high architecture platform, which now incorporates a much higher mix of aluminium, uh, hence a 33% improvement in rigidity this time around and a curb weight, which impressively is no heavier than the shorter, lower previous generation model. You are still looking at a minimum of around 2.3 tons of curb weight though. So if you're sold on the pavement presence, will the deal be sealed by the experience served up inside? Perhaps though, if you're wanting a sense of exclusivity here, you'll want to ignore the fact that virtually no attempts have been made to differentiate this cabin from that of the ordinary GLE SUV. But it's easy to get over that because you sit nice and high and commandingly and in place of the rather haphazard cabin design uh, which characterized the previous GLE Coupe, you're instead here served up an interior which in our view sets the benchmark for sophistication if not in terms of solidity of construction. Some features are of course familiar from other large Mercedes models, uh, primarily this distinctive widescreen cockpit layout with its twin 12.3 inch virtual 
displays. And of course, there's an exemplary standard of fit, finish and materials quality with a very high-end blend of leather, open pore wood and aluminium accents. Plus, you're surrounded by classy decor elements like a dash top that's stitched in Artico man-made leather and brushed stainless steel sports pedals. As with the SUV version of this model, a cabin talking point will be the colour-coordinated cabin ambiance achieved through fibre strips that you can illuminate in a choice of 64 different shades and which decorate the fascia, the doors and even these unusual arched grab handles on either side of this raised centre console here. The central vents are usually round in Mercedes models, are squarical here and a quartet of them sit above these climate controls in the centre of the double stitch dash. Shoulder room has improved by 21 millimetres with this second generation model uh, and premium features include a big panoramic glass roof, uh, head up display, uh, powered steering wheel adjustment and the classy drilled silver door speakers of the brand's Burmester surround sound system. The Nappa leather stitched seats are smart and supportive with four-way electric adjustability, memory settings, uh, heating, cooling and lumbar support and you'll need to get comfortable because there's an awful lot to get to grips with here as part of an enormous combined screen area which is 45 centimetres by 15. This is your portal for viewing what's intended to be one of this car's technological highlights, the MBUX, Mercedes-Benz User Experience Multimedia System. Now this is supposed to take in-car connectivity to a new level. Lots of entertainment systems claim to do that these days, but this one is certainly very complete. And of course, it incorporates all of the key elements that you'd expect to find, like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring. Uh, also Bluetooth, a DAB tuner, and hard disk sat-nav too, as part of a package which includes what Mercedes calls augmented reality technology. Now this is effectively a live camera feed of the road ahead, uh, overlaid with house numbers, road names, uh, direction arrows and other useful bits of journeying information which will help you to find your way. The Stuttgart maker has tried to simplify access to all this media connectivity by making many more of the functions accessible without manual operation. Uh, there's gesture functionality, for example, uh, by which, once perfected, you can do uh, all sorts of things like program the sat-nav and alter seat settings. Uh, you're more likely though to regularly use this car's provided voice functionality and that's activated by the phrase, hey Mercedes. That's the greeting you'll need to address to the screen in order to get the incorporated MBUX speech recognition setup working. As we've remarked before when testing some of the company's other more recent models, this aspect of MBUX remains, in our view, uh, something of a work in progress. Uh, sometimes you'll think it's brilliant uh, when it's finding you radio stations, for example, or telling you what the weather is at a programme destination. And other times, though, um, if it responds at all, it either trips up over similar words, uh, new and nude, for example, or it chimes in when you don't want it to, uh, say, when you're mentioning the word Mercedes in casual conversation. So you'll still need to get very familiar with the various manual touchpads which control the various infotainment elements. And the main one is down here at the base of the centre stack. Now we don't especially like touchpad controllers. Uh, on the move uh, they are very difficult to accurately use on anything but smooth surfaces. But this particular one is the best of its kind with easy functionality that's helped by these surrounding shortcut buttons for navigation, uh, radio, phone and vehicle features. Note to Lexus here, uh, if you want to give customers touchpad controllers, this is how you do it. Uh, we would still prefer the rotary capstan controller you get on a BMW X6 though. This touchpad deals with the various menus of the high resolution media display just above. That's divided into phone, nav, radio, media, comfort and info segments plus one for the various apps you'll be able to access too, including the brand's useful in-car office package, a web browser and weather reports. Uh, there are some really sophisticated graphics in play here, especially when it comes to the real-time displays that you'll find in the info menus vehicle section. Uh, they come from a special design department at Mercedes-Benz. 
The same functionality can be accessed via another tinier touchpad on the left-hand spoke of the sports steering wheel here. And if you use this to access a provided center screen uh, settings menu, then you'll be able to customize the separate digital instrument monitor ahead of you, uh, and that's via various design layouts. Choose from normal blue tinged classic, yellow themed sport, an orange progressive dial display, and a darker minimalistic understated setup. Uh, Mercedes AMG models have a further super sport layout option too. Now once you've decided what you want, you can use the other provided tiny touchpad on the right hand steering wheel spoke here to bring what you'd most like to see into regular view. And that's possible because the uh, two virtual dials are both customizable. The left one shows either trip computer info, a trip itinerary, uh, audio info, or driving angles and compass settings. And the right hand dial can show GPS mapping, a G-force readout, uh, safety assistance information, suspension settings, and a proactive eco display. Finally, you can also tailor the area between the dials, the central part of the instrument binnacle screen, uh, where you have a choice of viewing driving assistance, a phone, navigation, a trip computer, radio or media information. What else? Uh, well, some aspects of material quality could be better. The plastic air vent surrounds, for example. And the ergonomics aren't quite perfect. You'll initially be hunting for the starter button. It's curiously placed uh, down here by your left knee. And despite the lofty seating position, all-round visibility could be a fraction better too. Some might find these relatively chunky A-pillars slightly obscure their view at junctions. And the relatively narrow back window and angular rear styling will certainly see you making frequent use of the standard 360-degree surround view camera system and all-round parking sensors. The sensor info can also be projected into your line of forward sight on the head-up display. Now that's expanded in screen size to show far more than these kinds of setups usually do. And there's a really useful traffic light view feature that projects an image of the lights changing into the car if you're at the head of a queue at a junction uh, and you're parked right underneath them. Another feature we really like is the energizing package. Now this combines uh, music, lighting and scent into a couple of uh, selectable programs. There's Refresh and Vitality, and they're aimed at rejuvenating you at the end of a tiresome day. Uh, there's also a training option, which is aimed at relieving muscle strain on longer trips and an intelligent energizing coach feature too, which uh, recommends individual programs which are based on the kinds of journey you're on. It can even communicate uh, with your smartwatch or your fitness tracker, if you happen to be wearing one, and then automatically select a perfectly suited energizing theme, which you can start directly just when you need it. As for cabin storage, well, there's pretty much everything you'd want. Uh, the smart slatted cover of this stowage area at the bottom of the center stack slides back to reveal a couple of USB-C ports, a wireless charging mat, and perhaps our favorite touch, uh, cup holders, which are temperature controlled and which can be set to either warm or cool your drinks. Uh, further back uh, between the seats here, there's this twin lidded bin, and that incorporates a further USB-C port together with the unsightly converter leads that you'll need for it. Uh, there are bottle holders in the deep door bins. Uh, the driver's one uh, incorporates also a switch for the electric tailgate. And you get what would usually be uh, a spacious glove box, and that's complete with a pen clip. Although here, that has been rather compromised uh, in size by the need to incorporate the fragrance dispenser for the air balance package. You also get a storage net in the front passenger footwell, ticket clips and the sun visors, and an overhead sunglasses compartment uh, up around this dual-like lighting panel near the rear view mirror, uh, which flexes actually quite a bit if you press it too firmly. Time to take a seat in the rear. Inevitably, the swept back roof line means that taller folk will need to duck down a little more than they would with the standard SUV version of this model, but the tall stance and the 35 millimeter increase in door aperture size this time around ensure that entry is more straightforward than you normally expect it would be when accessing the rear of any car calling itself a coupe. 
and that very uncoupe like feel continues inside where you'll find a lot more legroom than you might expect certainly more than the first generation version of this model could provide uh, thanks to its replacements 20 millimeter lengthier wheelbase this is one of the wider rear benches in the class too with a spacious feel emphasized by the expansive panoramic glass roof overhead although this does limit the already slightly restricted headroom even more a six footer will find their forehead very close to the roof lining indeed and anyone taller will need to recline themselves a bit which isn't that easy because unlike the GLE SUV unfortunately this rear bench doesn't recline or slide come to that if there is ever a need to take three adults back here uh, the middle seated person's cause will be helped by the relatively low center transmission tunnel above which is a pull-out compartment uh, with twin USB-C ports and a small cubby. Uh, give it a bit of a tug and it comes out in your hand, another mark of build quality which isn't quite as solid as you'll find in this car's main rivals. Uh, just above are the controls and the twin provided vents for the standard four zone climate system and B pillar vents feature for that too. Plus you get decently sized door bins, seat back pockets, uh, coat hooks by the overhead reading lights and the central armrest with twin cup holders. Finally, let's check out the boot accessed via this EasyPack powered tailgate. Uh, it's easily the biggest in the class, 655 litres in size, 5 litres more than before. For comparison, the GLE SUV offers between 630 and 825 litres, depending on the position of the sliding rear bench. Anyway, what you get here is 30 litres more than a Porsche Cayenne Coupe, uh, 50 litres more than an Audi Q8, and 75 litres more than a BMW X6. Bear in mind though, if you choose the GLE 350DE plug-in model, capacity falls to just 510 litres. For this second generation model, Mercedes has lowered the loading lip height by 59 millimetres and that height can fall still further by activating this right-hand sidewall uh, airmatic suspension button which lowers the lip quite significantly by up to 50 millimetres. It still features this impractical chrome trimming though which will quickly scratch up if you're loading in heavy bulky items. There is some space beneath the boot floor, although only because uh, Mercedes neglects to fit any sort of spare wheel. Under here, you'll find the useful retracting net, which can be attached to separate the cabin from the cargo area. And that's a helpful touch if you're carrying pets. And because there's a 40-20-40 split for the rear seat back, uh, longer items like skis can be slid into the cabin uh, between a couple of rear seated passengers. You also get a 12 volt port on the right uh, and a bag hook, plus a netted area on the left and four tie down points. Although you'll struggle to reach the further ones, uh, so far does this cargo bay stretch away from you towards the main cabin area. That is actually a bit of an issue because rather unforgivably, Mercedes has neglected to provide cargo sidewall catches to retract the rear seat back. Uh, since the only catches to do that are on the seat back shoulders, uh, which you won't be able to reach unless you're of basketball playing height, you'll have to go round to the side doors if you want to fold the rear chairs. Once the rear bench is folded, you get up to 1,790 litres of space, 70 litres more than the previous generation model could offer, and just 265 litres less than the GLE SUV, which isn't bad considering the swept back roof line. It's 1,645 litres with the PHEV variant. Even there, you'll get a load area over 2 metres long and 1,080 millimetres wide, improvements of 87 mils and 72 mils, respectively, over the previous design. No coupe was ever as practical as this. You have to find a model for model premium of just under £2,700 over a standard Mercedes GLE if you're going to own this more stylish coupe version. And because this sportier variant doesn't bother with the two more affordable spec levels, uh, which are available with its SUV counterpart, the starting price here is considerably higher. Now, most customers uh, choose this AMG Line Premium Plus model, which uh, represents the starting point in the range and is available in two forms, either the GLE 350DE Formatic PHEV diesel version with a four-cylinder, two-litre plug-in hybrid powertrain, which at the time of this test in summer 2021 cost around £67,500, 
or in this alternative, more conventional GLE 400D formatic diesel guys with a six cylinder, three litre engine, which costs a bit more, just over 73,000 pounds. For the full, I don't care what you think, I'm having this car just as I want it effect though, you'll want one of the high performance Mercedes AMG derivatives. Now here, you choose between the six cylinder GLE 53 4Matic model, which has a potent mild hybrid six cylinder engine, and at the time of this test cost 82,000 pounds, or if you want a version with no pretensions of efficiency at all, then there's the wild 63S formatic flagship version, which uses the brands of Falterback tuning divisions, uh, famous sonorous 4 litre V8, and costs a cool £121,000. You'll want to know how those prices compare with this Mercedes model's three key rivals, the BMW X6, the Audi Q8, and the Porsche KN Coupe. Well, direct comparisons aren't that easy because different engines are used in different cases. Uh, just to take two examples, the Porsche doesn't offer any kind of diesel engine, and BMW doesn't offer its plug-in powertrain on the X6. If we take the entry-level GLE Coupe model, the 350D plug-in diesel, as our starting point, its asking price undercuts the equivalent versions of the plug-in Q8 and the KN Coupe by around £7,000, but both those two models offer more power, although considerably inferior levels of efficiency, because they're petrol plug-ins, not diesel ones. This conventional GLE 400D diesel most obviously pitches against the X6 xDrive 40D, which costs around £5,000 less in its entry-level sport form, but would cost much the same with the M Sport trim that would be more comparable to AMG Line Premium Plus spec. A very decently equipped Q850 TDI S-Line model could save you around £7,500 over this GLE 400D, but that Audi has around 50 horsepower less power. As for the Mercedes AMG models, well, the £82,000 price point of the GLE Coupe 53 4Matic, which has 435 horsepower plus 22 HP of extra EQ boost, would also buy you a BMW X6 M50i with 530 horsepower or an Audi SQ8 with 500 horsepower. The Porsche alternative, the KNS Coupe with 434 horsepower, would actually save you around £5,000. Although again, that saving would vanish once you spec that car up to a Mercedes level of trim. At the top of the range, the Mercedes AMG 63S Coupe at £121,000, which has 612 HP plus 22 horsepower of extra EQ boost, does battle with the Audi RS Q8, which costs from £104,000 and offers 592 HP, and the Porsche KN Coupe Turbo GT, which costs around £144,000 and offers 630 horsepower. There aren't really any other direct options, although some customers might be minded to look at models like the Maserati Levante or the Range Rover Sport, but those are really more directly targeted by Mercedes AMG versions of the more conventional GLE SUV. Uh, there are also potentially high performance versions of the Jaguar F-Pace and the Range Rover Velar, but those are really targeted more directly by the fastest Mercedes AMG 63S version of the mid-sized Mercedes GLC Coupe. So there are your options if you really want a large luxury sporting Coupe SUV of this kind. If having considered them, you conclude that there's nothing quite like this GLE Coupe, then you'll want to know just how generous Mercedes has been with the standard spec. So let's look in detail at that. And let's start with the AMG Line Premium Plus trim level we have here, the one applicable to the 300DE and 400D variants that most customers will be looking at. All GLE coupes get the brand's 9G Tronic 9-speed nine auto gearbox and airmatic air suspension, plus there's an adaptive damping system which is accessed through the Dynamic Select driving mode setup, which as usual on Mercedes models also allows you to adjust the throttle response, the steering feedback and the gear shift timings to suit the way that you want to drive. Uh, if you want to park, there's standard active parking assist to steer the car into spaces for you. And all GLE coupes get the brand's driving assistance package, which includes a full suite of the company's latest camera safety kit. 
There's AMG body styling for the front apron, the rear apron and the side skirts, plus this diamond style single louver radiator grille embellished by chrome pins. Uh, there's also multi-beam LED headlamps with adaptive high beam assist, big 22 inch five twin spoke design alloy wheels, heat insulating dark tinted privacy glass, uh, LED rear lamps, a powered easy pack tailgate and an alarm. Plus there are auto dimming power folding exterior mirrors which project a brand logo onto the ground as you enter or leave the car at night. All round parking sensors and illuminated side running boards embellished with uh, aluminium look trim and rubber studs. Inside where the upholstery is trimmed in soft Nappa leather and the front seats are heated with lumbar support, an interior highlight is a 64 color ambient lighting system which bathes the cabin in soft soothing shades at night. Uh, premium features include a big panoramic glass sunroof, a head-up display, uh, climatized cooled front seats and a Burmester surround sound system. You also get Thermotronic climate control, a multifunction leather stitched sports steering wheel, uh, cruise control with a speed limiter, wireless charging mat and a reversing camera too. Decor elements include anthracite open pore oak wood trim, a dash top which is stitched with Artico man-made leather, AMG floor mats and brushed stainless steel sports pedals. In addition, the extra little touches should please like temperature controlled cup holders and the fact that the Premium Plus equipment line also includes the brand's energizing package and that combines music, lighting and scent into a couple of selectable programs and their uh, refresh and vitality aiming at rejuvenating you at the end of a tiresome day. Uh, there's also a training option and that's aimed at relieving muscle strain on longer trips and an intelligent energizing coach feature too, which uh, recommends individual programs which are based on the kind of journey that you're on. It can even communicate with a smartwatch or with a fitness tracker if you happen to be wearing one, and then it'll automatically select a perfectly suited energizing theme that you can start directly just when you need it. The real cabin talking point though is the MBUX, Mercedes-Benz User Experience Multimedia Infotainment System. This is controlled by two 12.3 inch screens, one for the instrument cluster and another in the center of the dash. Uh, as you'd want, the MBUX system is embellished here with uh, smartphone integration. So that gives you um, Apple CarPlay and also Android Auto smartphone mirroring. And it also includes hard disk navigation, a DAB radio, uh, Bluetooth voice activation and live traffic information, which is free for the first three years of ownership. Plus, there is also the brand's voice activation system too, which you'll quickly find yourself using to operate many of the interior features via the command, Hey Mercedes. The MBUX package now includes the music streaming service Amazon Music. If you have an Amazon Music account, then you can transfer your music into the car via the Mercedes Me online music service. Uh, then individual songs, playlists or music from any desired genre can be played via touch or voice input. Amazon Prime members have 2 million songs to choose from with 50 million for Amazon Music Unlimited. And MBUX supports the Tidal music streaming service too. Uh, MBUX also incorporates another feature that we really like and that's what Mercedes calls car to x communication and this is a mobile phone supported exchange of information system which will see your GLE sending data on driving conditions back to a central hub which then shares it with other Mercedes drivers. Uh, that means that in a way that's almost magical, your GLE will know in advance about things like icy conditions and traffic jams. It's really clever. Talking of information technology, like most premium brands, and Mercedes has developed systems which allow you to monitor many aspects of your vehicle from your smartphone. Uh, every GLE Coupe model comes as standard with the Mercedes Me Connect vehicle monitoring package, and that works via a free app. This reminds you when a service is due and it can automatically detect and share with you details on your car's wear and tear items. In addition, the app gives you a one-touch button for fast accident and breakdown recovery, and it automatically alerts the rescue services in the event of an accident. Uh, it can even track your GLE if it's stolen. It can tell you if it's left a pre-agreed geographical boundary, if you lend it out, that is, and it can tell you where the vehicle is if you've forgotten where you parked it. 
Obviously, if you were going to stretch to the Mercedes AMG GLE 53 Formatic Plus Premium Plus variant, you'd want a bit more, which is why on that quick six cylinder version, as with the top V8 63S Formatic Plus model, you get unique AMG trimming for the exterior, including a bespoke radiator grille design, plus 22 inch AMG cross spoke alloy wheels and AMG specific menus and graphics for the interior screens. There's an AMG performance steering wheel with red topped stitching and aluminium shift paddles and you get a bespoke uh, AMG dynamic select driving mode system too with extra sport plus, slippery, trail and sand settings. Uh, these match up to various provided basic, advanced and pro level AMG Dynamics Drive programs which allow you to make the most of the various AMG engineered features the AMG Ride Control Plus Air Suspension, including active roll stabilization, the sharper AMG specific steering rack, the AMG Performance Exhaust, the enhanced high performance braking system, and uh, for circuit use, the AMG Track Pace app. In addition to all of that, the top Mercedes AMG GLE 63S Formatic Plus gets its own AMG Ride Control Plus Adaptive Damping Suspension System, a unique AMG High Performance Composite Braking Setup, an even throatier AMG Performance Exhaust, and the AMG Drivers Package, which raises the top speed to 173 miles an hour. Styling is enhanced by the AMG Night Package, which colours bodywork elements in black for a meaner look, and there's a black finish to match for the 22-inch AMG cross-spoke alloy wheels, separated by running boards, which enhance the lower side sills. Inside, there's bespoke AMG carbon fibre trim, uh, a Dynamica microfibre roof liner, and AMG exclusive Nappa leather upholstery in a combination of magma grey and black. You also get multi-contour front seats that move with the bends, heated rear seats, soft closed doors, the air balance interior fragrance system, the MBUX augmented reality navigation setup, uh, the energizing comfort package plus cabin ambiance feature we mentioned earlier on, and all the camera safety elements of the brand's driving assistance package plus. Uh, we're gonna brief you on that in a moment. What about extra cost features? Well, with AMG Line Premium Plus trim, the key thing missing here, which you can have on this car in other markets, is the brand's e-active body control system, which counteracts body roll at speed through the turns. As for what you can have, uh, where well, you might want to consider the optional towing package, that it increases the standard 2,700 kilo brake to towing capacity to 3,500 kilos, and as well as throwing in an electronically folding tow bar, includes the brand's clever trailer maneuvering assist technology. Now at up to three miles an hour, this can control your steering angle while you're reversing backwards when hitched up as you monitor progress via dynamic guidelines, which is shown as an additional part of the rear view camera display. Uh, on to aesthetics, unless you want your GLE Coupe painted in solid polar white, you're going to have to talk to your dealer about one of the various metallic colours and pay more. There are also a couple of even pricier Designio Special Shades, uh, Diamond White, uh, which is what we have here actually, and Hyacinth Red. Uh, practical options include a stowage tub for the boot, uh, concertina ring load sill protector, floor mat trays, uh, roof carrier bars, a roof box, and a roof bike rack. For the cabin, you can add in various extras onto the front seat backs, folding tables, coat hangers, and a mount for a tablet PC. And you can add Mercedes star projector puddle lights and chromed recesses for the door handles. Enough with that, let's switch to safety, which down the years has always been a primary consideration for Mercedes. Uh, let's give you some highlights from the roster this time around. Uh, we'll start with active braking assist, which warns the driver of an impending collision and it'll brake automatically if there's no response. Uh, testing has indicated that this whole setup will eradicate 20% of nose to tail accidents and will decrease their severity in a further 25% of cases. Lane keeping assist is also standard and that's there to warn you if you drift over your lane uh, delineating line before applying subtle steering assistance to ease your GLE back to where it ought to be. 
and there's more. All variants get attention assist, which will monitor your driving reactions for drowsiness. And the pre-safe anticipatory safety program will tighten the seat belts, close the windows, and even adjust the seats in a fraction of a second if the stability system deems that an accident is inevitable. Uh, there is also an active bonnet which protects pedestrians and the usual twin front, side and curtain airbags. Plus, there's also a knee bag for the driver. As you'd expect, tyre pressure monitoring and all the usual electronic aids for traction, braking and stability control are included too. And traffic sign assist speed sign recognition is built into the widescreen cockpit displays too. Adaptive brake lights flash in emergency stops to warn following motorists and an emergency call system will alert the rescue services with your exact GPS location if the airbags go off in an accident. But that's just the start. As mentioned earlier, all GLE coupes get the brand's driving assistance package, which includes some of the company's latest semi-autonomous driving technology. Though to experience this, you need to be on a dual carriageway and you have to have activated two of the driving assistance package elements, active distance assist Distronic and also active steering assist. Now the active distance assist Distronic feature, this is basically a super advanced adaptive cruise control which automatically regulates your distance to the car in front and can, if necessary, uh, remotely slow the car with up to 50% of stopping power. Uh, active steering assist, that keeps you in the center of your designated lane and it will, if needed, apply some subtle steering correction to ease you back to where you should be. If you're trying the autonomous driving capability, then you'll also want to experience another neat feature, which is part of this optional pack, the clever Active Lane Change Assist System. On a dual carriageway with the Active Distance Assist Distronic Cruise Control and the Active Steering Assist operating together, the car will overtake by itself. Yes, really, uh, you just hold the indicator stalk for a couple of seconds and it will pull out to pass a slower vehicle and then the car will slot itself back into lane as soon as it's safe to do that. Another included driving assistance package element is the evasive steering assist feature and that scans the road ahead for pedestrians and it supports you in making sudden steering maneuvers to avoid them. Uh, pedestrians are also targeted by an upgraded active braking assist system. Now that additionally is embellished to be able to also look out for uh, unexpected tailbacks and also crossing traffic. There's more in the driving assistance package too. Uh, active blind spot assist not only warns you if you're about to dangerously pull out in front of another vehicle, but it applies light steering torque to correct the maneuver and route-based speed adaptation uses navigation data to automatically adapt your speed before curves, roundabouts and junctions and toll roads and it will alert you if you're about to approach a stationary tailback immediately reducing your speed to 62 miles an hour as a precaution prior to any braking needed. The pack also includes a pre-safe plus feature which helps specifically with vehicles running into the back of you. If necessary, it locks the brakes on standstill to prevent your car from being pushed into danger. There's also active speed limit assist which ensures that detected speed limits are automatically adopted as a set speed for that active distance assist distronic cruise control system we mentioned earlier on. Uh, we also like the exit warning function. Now this alerts passengers who are about to leave the vehicle to oncoming traffic or pedestrians. And finally, there is the reassurance of active emergency stop assist, which cuts in uh, automatically if you are suddenly taken ill at the wheel, for example, with a heart attack or a seizure. In a nightmare scenario like that, this feature will allow the car to seamlessly take over, initiating emergency braking and activating the hazard flashes. Large luxury SUVs are a pretty easy target for the environmentalists, uh, particularly models like this one. A recent International Energy Agency study reckoned that between 2010 and 2018, SUVs were the second largest contributor to the increase in global CO2 emissions. Just about the only thing less ecological you'd think would be a big, powerful sports coupe. And here we are in a car that pretends to be both of those things. Yet. 
We've got little sympathy for those who think models like this one should be banned. I mean, where would it all stop if we allow politicians and green activists to tell us what kind of cars we should be allowed to drive? Should you come up against either of those at the wheel of a GLE Coupe, then you'll be better placed to argue your corner if you happen to have chosen the entry-level GLE 350DE PHEV variant. Uh, you can get a plug-in powertrain in rival Audi Q8 and Porsche Cayenne Coupe models too, but with those cars, the engine will be of the petrol sort. Here, Mercedes has chosen to base the whole thing around its two-litre four-cylinder diesel, which appears here in a 194-horsepower state of tune. The electrified element of this powertrain is provided by a 100-kilowatt electric motor activated by a lithium-ion battery, which is one of the biggest we've ever seen in the plug-in model. It's 30.8 kilowatt hours in capacity. This promises an impressive WLTP rated all electric driving range of up to 66 miles and that facilitates an overall CO2 figure of just 23 grams per kilometre, which is almost certainly better than that of the car that your local most zealous green activist will be driving around in himself. The 350DE's pie in the sky WLTP rated combined cycle fuel figure is 313.9 miles per gallon. You'll need a fast charger for really quick plug-in turnaround times with this PHEV variant. Uh, Mercedes talks about the 50 kilowatt DC public fast chargers, of which there are over a thousand around the UK, uh, delivering a 0 to 80% rapid charge in about 30 minutes. From a wall box, this car will take 90 minutes for a full charge, while from a conventional power socket, it'll require about five hours. Perhaps it says much about the kind of person who chooses a GLE Coupe that the takeoff in this relatively sensible version isn't massive. As we remarked in our driving experience section earlier on, if you're wanting this kind of car, then you're probably wanting it with a big rumbly engine under the bonnet, uh, not the kind of four-cylinder unit that's found in your local uh, middle manager's C-Class. All of which means that if you do want a diesel variant of this car, uh, then you might be more likely to choose the more conventional GLE 400D diesel uh, that we're trying here. It manages 33.6 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and up to 219 grams per kilometre of CO2. That is much the same as you get from a rival Audi Q8 50 TDI, but it is some way off the figures that you get from a directly comparable uh, BMW X6 xDrive 40D. 41.5 mpg there and 179 grams per kilometer, mainly because the BMW is well over 100 kilos lighter. Mercedes could have run BMW a little closer here if they'd embellished this three liter, six cylinder diesel power plant with their latest EQ Boost 48 volt mild hybrid tech. Uh, it's still lacking from this at the time of the test in summer 2021. For some reason though, that's limited instead to the pricier petrol powered Mercedes AMG GLE Coupe models that a few folk will choose. In this film, we've already briefed you on the fact that the most accessible of these is found with the Mercedes AMG GLE 53 Formatic Plus, uh, which has a petrol three liter six cylinder power plant featuring a 48 volt electrical system, which supplements the usual 12 volt setup. Instead of a conventional alternator, this EQ Boost power plant has an integrated starter generator, which provides power for energy sapping items like the water pump and the air conditioning compressor. Plus it regulates engine idling and it's integral to the brake energy regeneration system. All of this enables the GLE 53 to return up to 26.4 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle, which should mean you'll get an operating range of around 600 miles from the 85 litre fuel tank. And there's up to 245 grams per kilometre of WLTP rated CO2. Both of these you might think are pretty good figures for a big petrol powered SUV that's capable of sprinting to 62 in under six seconds. It is worth pointing out though that because of this Merck's extra 115 kilos of curb weight, they're only actually fractionally better than the readings you'll get from BMW's rival X6 M50i, which offers around 100 HP more power beneath your right foot. There doesn't seem as if much efficiency advantage is generated by the EQ Boost system in the top Mercedes AMG 63S V8 petrol power model either. Its stats, 22.8 mpg and 280 grams per kilometre, aren't significantly better than those of the unelectrified engine used by the rival similarly performing Audi RS Q8. 
whatever GLE coupe model you choose, you'll get all the industry's most significant current efficiency aids, of course. So every version of this Mercedes gets an eco start stop function to cut the engine uh, when you don't need it, when you're stuck in traffic or when you're waiting at the lights and also a system that uh, disconnects the engine from the transmission at cruising speeds. Plus the diesels also use an AdBlue system to cleanse their fuel of impurities uh, using additive from a reservoir which will need to be topped up at regular servicing. Uh, Mercedes has done its best to boost efficiency with sleeker aerodynamics, hence the 0.32 CD drag coefficient figure that's 9% better than the 0.35 CD reading of the previous model. Uh, that's courtesy of a more wind cheating design of the door mirrors, uh, the rear lights and for the wheels plus sleeker underbody panelling. In addition of course the driver will need to play his or her part. Obviously to get anywhere near the returns that we've quoted you'll have to select the dynamic select driving mode system into its eco setting. Uh, this marginally limits the accelerator pedal curve and it also uh, slightly restricts the output of the seat heating, the heated rear window and of the air conditioning. You can also bring up two options on the two fascia monitors which will help. A consumption option in the vehicle section of the centre dash screen uh, will graphically show your recent attempts at frugality and a selectable eco display in the instrument binnacle here uh, that will grade your driving uh, based on acceleration, on deceleration and constancy of speed and that shows in real time the bonus frugality that you achieved throughout uh, careful driving since the start of your journey. What else? Well, as with all large luxury SUVs, VED tax will take quite a chunk out of your budget. Uh, because all GLE coupe models are priced well above £40,000, owners will need to pay a luxury car tax VED supplement, uh, which for this 400D variant would set the total VED charge at £1,345 for the first year of ownership, with a further £490 a year then payable for the following four years. Uh, compare that to the 350D plug-in version which attracts no VED charge in year one and a £480 fee for the following four years. The AMG 53 derivative attracts a £1,910 VED charge in year one. Uh, for the AMG 63 it's 2245 and then both models will cost £490 in annual payments for the following four years. If you're wondering about benefiting kind taxation, uh, then we'll tell you that this 400D model sits in the 37% bracket, as do the two petrol-powered Mercedes AMG models. The base uh, 350D plug-in diesel variant in contrast is rated at just 6%. Uh, a touch ironically, in tax terms, it makes it one of the greenest and most efficient cars that we looked at all year. Other things we'll need to tell you uh, include the comprehensive three-year unlimited mileage warranty, uh, the same as BMW, but better than Audi's three-year 60,000 mile package. Uh, this is built on by Mercedes Mobilo scheme and that delivers breakdown cover for up to 30 years as long as you continue to have your car serviced at a Mercedes main dealer. And it's worth knowing that your maintenance outlay can be kept a little in check by going for the optional service care package, uh, which takes care of routine maintenance. It spreads the cost of regular servicing and it guarantees the price of parts and labor for up to four services. And it covers also the cost of all recommended service items like brake fluid, uh, spark plugs, air filters, fuel filters, and screen wash. There's also an assist dashboard service indicator that monitors engine use and tells you exactly when a garage visits due. Uh, for reference, servicing is usually required every 15,500 miles or every year, whichever comes around first. Uh, fixed price servicing is available across the range and most buyers opt for the uh, Mercedes service care plan, which could cost you as little as about 33 pounds a month based either on a two service, two year deal or three years with three services or four years and four services. It's also worth mentioning that the optional Mercedes Me Connect Services package includes remote self-diagnostic capability and that enables your GLE to monitor wear and tear items and alert your dealer to let you know if something needs seeing to. You can also insure your car through Mercedes, although most company drivers will of course have that included in their lease cost. 
If you do pay the insurance on the car yourself though, uh, you'll need to know about the ratings, which are a little on the high side. Uh, this GLE 400D is rated Group 49E, while rather unreasonably, the four-cylinder, two-litre GLE Coupe uh, 350DE PHEV is rated at Group 50E, which is the same rating applied to the two Mercedes-AMG petrol variants. Residual values should be similar to those applicable to the standard GLE SUV. On that basis, independent experts reckon that an owner of a GLE Coupe 400D could expect to see around 45% of their original purchase price back after a typical three-year, 60,000-mile ownership period. That's a showing that's comparable or better than that managed by obvious direct rivals. This is the kind of car that evokes howls of self-righteous indignation from the motoring press. They'll criticise its weight, its looks and its politically incorrect attitude before, of course, going on to fawn over some enormous luxury limousine or thirsty, dirty supercar. It's all very hypocritical. If you don't like this car, then fair enough, but don't moralise about it. Needless to say, we're not going to do that here. Would we choose one? Probably not, but we do recognise that a small but significant group of buyers will absolutely love it, and having driven this car, we do understand why. This is the kind of model that Mercedes needs to make, and not only because the luxury SUV coupe market segment is an increasingly profitable one. People who will never buy this car will nonetheless see it as proof that the three-pointed star is changing into a more dynamic, more relevant and sporting brand. And the fact that this is happening should surely concern the top brass at BMW, Audi and Porsche, because ultimately that will affect their bottom line profits. As for the GLE Coupe itself, well, this second generation version, although it is a considerable dynamic improvement over its predecessor, still isn't the true sports coupe that Mercedes promises, but then no car in this sector is. There's too much size and weight on offer here for that. Weight being a particular issue for this design in comparison with its BMW X6 arch rival. Potential buyers won't care very much though, uh, because what you do get is more what they'll be looking for anyway. Prodigious power, sumptuous luxury, and real overtaking presence. Now true, an X6, a Q8, or a KN Coupe can give you that as well. But with a Mercedes badge on the bonnet, you could argue that this extreme package carries a bit more credibility. Or if it makes more sense, you'll find it easier to get away with parking it outside your company HQ. True, your CEO might still raise an amused eyebrow, but if you're the kind of very individual buyer who want one of these, then you probably won't mind that very much because you'll be someone who shares the confidence which is apparent in every aspect of this model's makeup. In years to come, uh, when we're considering this market segment, we might very well forget who got there first and who tagged along. Who knows, we might even forget about SUV coupes altogether. In the here and now though, Here's one you might really like.